So I'm now going to move on to a feature that can be quite useful, especially um, as an aid to um, managing backups. Um, if you've got a backup server, and that thing is called snapshots, you can take snapshots of the file system. And the way it can be useful for backup servers is that you take a snapshot of the backup before you do the um, backup and it means you've fixed in time a backup that was made previously which you can then go back to um, using another feature of ZFS which we'll be showing in the next video. So with snapshots it's another feature which needs to be set on and it's on the um, well sorry no it doesn't need to be turned on what needs to be turned on is a property on the Z pool to be able to see snapshots so when you create snapshots by default you can't see them which is a bit of a hindrance if you need to refer to them at a later date so to turn them on um, we could, well let's look at it first list snapshots on test you can see by default it's set to off so what we're going to do for this exercise is to turn it on set list snapshots on and you can see it's now on so anytime we do a ZFS list we'll be able to see the snapshots that have been created now that snapshots are kind of a side effect of how um, ZFS creates or modifies files it uses a mechanism called copyright on, copy on write and what that means is that when a file is updated or modified, traditional file systems will just modify the date, modify the data of the file directly. So if something needs to be changed, that um, sector or bit or byte will be modified directly on disk without um, you know changing anything else, which you know, is quite an efficient way of doing things. Um, the trouble is that if if you've got several sectors to update in the file that may be different parts of the file um, and something happens in the middle of writing writing those sectors so you've written two and then the power goes you haven't written the third potentially that file is corrupt because the operation to update that file wasn't completed <clears throat> to get around that to again with regard to integrity with ZFS transactions which are the operations on the, the file system are uh, atomic so they either fail or they don't fail they succeed and part of the way they do that with modifying a file is that a copy is made of the data that needs to be modified and then it's the copy that is altered and assuming the alteration is successful the pointers are updated to point at that new um, block that has been modified and the old block is just left on the disk there's no need for it anymore there's no point in deleting it, it can be overwritten at some other point if it did fail well there's no problem because when the system's brought back up all the pointers haven't been modified they're still pointing at the original data so all it means you might may have lost you know a few microseconds or maybe even a second of updates where the failure happened during the update of the copy so the copy is still on the disk but only partially updated but it's not a problem as I say because the pointers will, haven't been updated because the copy didn't complete so the data is all intact and there's no corruption um, no, no uh, failure of integrity of files or the file system all you've lost is maybe as I say just a few few changes that occurred just before the power cut so the fact that the previous version of the file or the data blocks that were being modified exist um, is how snapshots work because they still exist snapshots create a way of uh, being able to remember the old blocks um, while still up updating new blocks so as I said when a block gets updated the old block's not deleted, it's just forgotten about, but with snapshots um, it's not forgotten about because uh, a relationship is made between the snapshot and the old block. 
and that's how we can refer to old data via these snapshots because they're still pointing at these old blocks before they were updated. So the snapshot, the word snapshot is quite a good term because it is like taking a photograph. It takes a picture of the file system or the data set at a moment in time. It, takes a, it fixes it in time. Once a snapshot is taken, um, it is immutable. It can't be changed. Um, we can still change the file system. The file system still gets updated. And the more the file system gets updated, obviously, the more difference there is between a snapshot and the current version of the file system. And we can keep on taking snapshots. They're cheap. They don't cost anything, you know, apart from maybe a few few K or a few hundred K or so, but effectively they don't cost anything. They're almost instantaneous to create. Um, yeah, they're, they're a really good mechanism. And as I said, we'll see in the next video on how we can utilize them fully to go back to retrieve stuff. So for example, my example of a backup server, if you've done several backups over time, you realize there's a file that's gone missing that you need. It's not on the previous backup. You need to go back further in time. There's a mechanism where we can go through and look, look at older snapshots and retrieve that file from one of the previous backups. Um, another thing with the snapshots is that the changes that are made are just differences. So um, the if you have um, 100 files and you take a snapshot of them, one file is modified. The only changes that are made on disk are those changes to that one file. All the other files stay the same, so it's cheap in terms of disk space when changes are made. Only the changes to the files is, is the changes um, that need additional disk space. As I say, sufficient way of managing the file system, so you could use it on a live file system. Um, be careful if you do do it on a live file system which has open files because obviously if you try to return to that snapshot and the files are open, um, you might be in for surprise, you might not be able to get back to your data as expected or um, you know, might, might leave the system in a corrupt state, the data in a corrupt state. So it's probably best to take snapshots when you haven't got big databases open and things like that. but other than that, it should be pretty safe. Unless you've got databases or mechanisms that can synchronize with the snapshot, um, take a little bit of mind about what you're doing when you are taking a snapshot. What I'm going to do first of all is to create a file. I'll just echo it to the file. Um, let's call this a really important data. And I'll put that into a really important file dot text. So let's just check that. Right, what I should do though, first of all, is uh, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this as a ordinary user not the best so we've got some shared data on there anyway um, so let's do this again so echo really important data which is going to be in a really important file text cat Let's just view that. So there's our really important data. I want to protect this now. I'm going to back it up effectively. Although this is no substitute for backup. But what we are doing is we're locking this data onto the file system. So what we do to create a snapshot is go back to the root and run ZFS snapshot. The name of the pool, the name of the data set, and then we follow it with an at sign and then a name, an arbitrary name we can give it. So I'm going to call mine snapshot one. And that's it, it's created a snapshot. If we do ZFS list, you can see that it's created the snapshot and it's currently 
taken up zero bytes because there's no differences and no changes been made. So now what I'm going to do is go back to my user. I'm going to copy my really important file, create a copy of it, call it really important file 2, and I'm going to modify really, really important file 2, add some more data to it, and save it. So now on disk I've got two files, one's the original really important data, a really important file, sorry, dot text, and the other one is really important file too, with some different stuff in it. Now I want to delete the really important file too, so I'll delete it, but oh dear, I've deleted the wrong file, I meant to delete really important file too. Well, because we've got a snapshot, although that file doesn't exist anymore, on the disk, um, it's it's been locked into the system by the snapshots. If I do ZFS list now, you can see that the snapshot's been incremented by a little bit of data because it's recorded the changes that we've made, and it knows about the differences between the current state of the file system and the state of that snapshot as we took it. So how do we get this data back then? Well, what we can do is we can roll back using the command rollback the file system and we specify the pool as you might imagine the data set and the snapshot name and that's now rollback so if we go back to the user recall the ls-l and you can see we've lost the really important file too which is not a problem because I wanted to delete it anyway, but we've got back really important file, and to prove it is the original, we'll just cat it again, and you can see it is the really important data. So rolling back takes you back in time to where you took the snapshot. So if you have got new data that you do want to keep, then that's worth remembering that a rollback may not be the right solution if you want to keep new data. Snapshots are good and rolling back are good if you want to try out things. So if you've got your system in a certain state, you want to that's a good state, you want to keep it like that. If you want to test something out and if it fails, go back, then that's when rollbacks are good. You can take a snapshot of the current system state, do your tests. If it's if the tests have worked out fine, you want to keep what you've done, that's fine, carry on, maybe even take another snapshot. If the tests fail or it corrupts the file system or something bad happens that you, you don't want, you can just roll back and your file system, your data set, will be back in the state that it was previously. Um, one thing to note is that you can only roll back to the most recent snap, uh, snapshot. So if you have got several snapshots um, and you want to roll back to an earlier one, you'll have to delete the most recent ones.